Thanks, everybody. Thank you so much. Welcome to Build. I am your host, Ricky Camilleri. A neurotic single mother hits the road with her son and her estranged father. Emotions fly high. Hijinks ensue, and some of our best actors working get absolutely wonderful scenes together. Let's take a look at the trailer for Boundaries. Have you spoken with your father recently? He called, but I did not pick up. So you set a boundary. I do notice you have a kitten hidden in your purse. Were you hiding it from me? I think our hour is up. Oh, you finally called me back. You got kicked out of your home, didn't you? We can't have men of such low moral integrity bringing down the place. Oh, please. Dad needs a place to stay. Last time Dad stayed with me, the FBI followed me to work for a week. I would take him, but he's a horrible example for Henry. Does this mean I'll get to see you guys? No, I would put him on a plane. I'm not driving that heap cross country. But I'd like to spend some time with you two. Absolutely not. There's $200,000 worth of weed in there. I can't unload it on my own. I'll help you. Did you change my navigation? He gave me $20. Henry! Hey! Who are these people? Old friends of your grandfather's. Don't inhale anything. No, we cannot take any more dogs. You're like a Pied Piper of Mange. I don't know why you complain about Jack so much. I like him. Don't hurt my kid. I got through it, but he's different. Your mom's not going to like to know who that's going to. Who? Your father. I want to see him. No. Are you a side for psoriasis? He's the worst possible man for me. I tell Misty that all the time. Please tell me Misty's your cat. You want me to tell you Misty's my cat? Who is she? My cat. She's your wife, isn't she? She is. Oh, I have set a boundary. Hello. It's a line in the sand, in the concrete, actually. Good morning. That's all there is. I used to be able to make you laugh. Oh, Dad. Dad. <laughs> oh, see? You still laugh. Christ, Jack. I thought you were a Buddhist. Oh, I am. But you bring out the right-wing Christian in me. Everybody, please welcome from the film Boundaries, writer-director Shauna Fest, Vera Farmiga, Louis McDougall, and the legendary Peter Fonda is here. Who I'm sure, like every legend, loves to be called legend. No, not at all. I call him icon. icon even you call him icon? icon? How does he respond? Does he respond well to that? that? Yes, that's true, I am an icon. No, he doesn't. You know what, I, I respond to action <laughs> and cut. <laughs> All right, uh, let's talk about Boundaries. I love this film. I loved all the performances. You have so many great faces in the movie. Um, but first off, we have to ask, what was it like working with all of the animals in every scene? They always say the hard, one of the hardest things to do is to shoot a movie at sea or to shoot with a bunch of animals. And every scene has a bunch of animals in it. Yeah, they were not wrong. It was, um, I, I teach at film school and I warn my students constantly, do not put animals in your movie and then I make a movie with about 12 animals. Um, it, was, it was crazy, I mean, I'm an animal rescuer, so it, this, having Loretta on my lap right now is really calming for me, I love, love animals. So I think there was also a calming presence on set, but it was pretty chaotic and, you know, Vera's a little allergic, so that was kind of interesting. <laughs> First week or two is on Benadryl, oh, yeah. and then I was fine. Then, then it's just a matter of days before I get used to their dander. But um, Loretta's a bit of a diva. Yeah. You know, I gotta say she was great at improvisation. She um, she slipped. Did you get to improvise at all, or what? She slipped me some tongue. Yeah. Right away, she's such a floozy. Yeah. First time I held her, whoa. When you read the script and you saw all the animals in it, were you like, okay, I'm allergic, but I really want to no, do this movie? No, or did no, you not it's, know? It's, not, it's, it's nothing that some pharmaceuticals couldn't handle. But oh, okay. um, I, I, no, I love working with children and animals. You never, you know, they keep you on your toes, and you never, you never know what's coming at you. And it, it, it's, yeah. Um, these guys are amazing. These guys are amazing. They're, the, you know, the, the human. Um, Abandonment is underpinned by the the these these dogs that have been abandoned, and it's just a reminder that you know some you know humans will disappoint you, but <laughs> animals don't. Rarely, rarely, rarely do they. Not really, never <laughs> at yeah. all. Yeah. What drew you to this character? Um, you know, I think doing this film was just going to be um, a little bit easier than screaming at my at my parents. <laughs> It's also coming off of a number, a number of seasons of uh, Bates Motel as well, which yeah. is like a 
I imagine as much as you love playing that character can feel slightly claustrophobic playing someone like that for that long. Um, no, no, not I'm at not, all. I'm wrong. Not at all. It was a great run. I loved who I worked with on Bates Motel. I loved my castmates. We, we adored each other. We were really affectionate with each other. It was, it was just a great chemistry all around. And this, this was the same. And I think anywhere you, where the actors are looking to put the fun in dysfunction, mm -hmm. it's, it's going to be a party. Because nothing is really, I mean, nothing's fun about healthy in terms of storytelling. No, not there's, at all. Super boring. <laughs> yeah, there's nowhere to go. Boring, yeah. A story is conflict, and conflict is dysfunction. Exactly. So that's where you go. Uh, Lewis, what drew you to your character? Um, well, what drew me to Henry was, I guess, how unique he was. Um, you see in the film, he's a very avid drawer. He likes got wonderful drawings. Yellow, um, you know, and I remember looking at the thing, it said rated R for nude sketches, so that's what you've got to look out for. Yeah, so I guess just how unique he is, and, you know, it's not like everybody else like that, so, yeah. What did you think of the sketches when you first saw them? Oh, I mean, first of all, whoever drew them was very, very talented, because they're, 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 extreme, they're extremely, extremely detailed. Um, so, yeah, yeah, I mean, I kind of found them funny, I guess. They're, they're kind of cool. Did you relate to your character at all? Um, I think everybody could relate to something about Henry. You know, he's having trouble at school, he doesn't really feel like he fits in, um, you know, so I think I could relate to him in, in that aspect, yeah. Kind of searching for adventure and purpose as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, I mean, in the film you see, like, um, I think a lot about the film is about second chances. You see that Henry's not really had a proper father who's there, and so when Jack comes along, his grandfather sort of gives him a second chance to be a son, and it also gives Jack a second chance to be a father. You've got a number of, uh, I mean, most of the movies with you and Vera and, uh, and Christopher Plummer. Mm -hmm. How was uh, Christopher Plummer? Both oh. of you can really answer. I mean, I guess all of you can answer working with Christopher Plummer. Yeah. I, he, um, he's like a cool dude. He's a jester. He really is. He's, he's, an, he's that eight-year-old that we were, yeah. we were talking <laughs> about. He's not 88, or how old, how old is he now? He's eight. He's eight. Is he 88 years old? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so like, it's like having a big kid on set, and uh, so energetic, um, just never gets a line wrong. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, all the preparations we made for him, which were okay, you know, he's in his eight, late 80s, he's doing 10 pages of dialogue a day, this might be difficult. I mean, we just felt so foolish when we were shooting. He, he was never, never needed a line reading. He was always on book. He was always com earliest person. He would show up before anybody else. I mean, an yeah. amazing work ethic. Stamina to like boot. It. I just yeah. think he just enjoys still the process and storytelling so much. And you, you see and that passion is infectious. Is that inspiring for, for you guys to see someone at that age still sort of uh, so dedicated to the craft and probably figuring out their character and figuring out the scenes? Because so often, as an actor, you know, you've done so many projects where you probably didn't think it went well, but then the movie was a huge success, so what does it matter what you think when you get to the set at this point? But to still see someone so engaged with the process and being creative, is that inspiring? It, it's a real thing for me. I look at that and say, yikes, if I could be doing that in 10 years, because he's 10 years older than I, Terrific. Yeah. I, I like working. You know, and when I, I did another film with him just a little later, and I said, We have to keep meeting like this. It means we're working and we get free food and, you know, crafty. <laughs> this is a great job. You guys should do like a buddy cop comedy. That'd be kind <laughs> of cool. Can I be the good cop finally? <laughs> you play uh, kind of an aging hippie. In this, as does as this plumber to to a degree, like maybe a hippie, but uh, an aging kind of a pothead, if if you will. Oh, where do you where did that inspiration come from? <laughs> no, just... Here, that's almost a no no. But the no nos are in a car at night in the rain with a child and an animal, <laughs> and that's that's what Shana figured out for herself. No, I um, I'm an eight year old. See, the 78-year-old the cashes the checks, but the 8-year-old doesn't think about being 9 or 10. 10-year-old wants to have een. 9-year-old wants 10, two digits. The 8-year-old is right in the moment. So it makes sense for me to be an 8-year-old. Christopher is like an 8-year-old. Vera's an 8-year-old. He's 18, but that's okay. You can call an 18-year-old 8. When he gets older, you can tell him he's call like me. an 8-year-old. You can't do that now. He's pretty hip. <laughs> Absolutely. 
uh, where did this movie, where did this story come from? It feels, I don't know if it's necessarily autobiographical, but you do have a dog sitting on your lap. <laughs> and a big part of her character is rescuing animals. Yeah. No, I'm a huge animal rescuer. Um, the only part that's... No, there's okay. a lot more, yeah. This film was really based on the relationship with my father, who was incredibly charismatic, married six times, six different kids with six wives, and um, was in and out of my life, most of my life, because he was... He was a marijuana salesman. I guess is that the proper term for it? I don't know. What is the? It's a very nice term. Pr- I know it is. Are you, a, are you a narc? I'm sorry. <laughs> he was the proper marijuana salesman. Um, marijuana cigarettes yeah. to the teens. You know that's what he did, and he was in and out of prison, um, and he was in and out of my life, and I constantly wanted more of him, um, and so when he was with me, I was really happy, and I, I didn't want to let on how disappointed I was because I wanted him to stay. And so it took me a while to get in touch with my own anger that I had towards my father and to understand that and to actually see my father for who he really was. And so that was the journey that I wanted to tell in this film. Is that difficult, adapting something so personal into a story? Because once you start telling a story, the story has to kind of take over in a lot of ways. And you have to get from point A to point B to the middle and to an end. So you have to add and remove from the things that are actually between you and this person you're thinking about. And inevitably, when you're writing about yourself in the story, I mean... Me as a person, I'm incredibly boring. I go to bed at eight o'clock. I, you know, yeah, me too. Do you? Okay, yeah, oh great. Yeah. <laughs> so we make the horrible protagonist in a film. So this is me times ten, probably. So you have to exaggerate even your own person, persona. I did not exaggerate my father in this, or my sister, or a lot of the other characters you see in the movie. Did you know that your character was based off of her so much? And did clearly you think by about my it? brunette hair, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. Uh, I didn't until Shauna's husband, Brian, who's also the producer of the film, tipped me off towards the end of the project. We didn't really discuss that. Thank God it was the end. Would, do you think you'd be trying to do an impression of her throughout the whole movie if you knew at the beginning? No, I don't, I don't think I would necessarily. I, I, I mean, if it had been important to her, I, I would have. I guess that it would wasn't. have been up to my director. <laughs> Um, the film opens, not to give really anything away, but the film opens, we see a clip of it in the trailer on this uh, beautiful shot of you in your therapist's office, and it holds on you for some time. I'm wondering if you knew that that was going to be the opening shot of the film and that it wouldn't cut away from you and it would hold on you that long because I don't know how that would affect your performance or you as an actor going into that scene I can't think that. about uh, the editing of a film. I love it. If I wasn't doing what, I'm, what I do, I would probably be a film editor. I love, I think that's where you make your mark as a director. That's tonally, that's where you put your stamp on as a director. And that's just a testament to, to her style of filmmaking that she doesn't, you know, she, she's in it. <laughs> She's in it. Well, I'm in so it. in it when I'm watching Vera's performance, when I'm watching Peter's performance, Lewis's performance. I don't want to cut away. It's so hard for me to make a cut. And so with Vera in that opening scene, I really, I just, that was just me being selfish and being like, I just want to know and stay on her because her performance is so amazing. Yeah, I loved it. I loved yeah. how long you waited to finally cut away from it yeah. there. Did you have other people telling you that you should cut away sooner or anything? Oh, yeah, sure. You know, when you're making films, people are always like, no, this is too long. People are going to get bored. They're going to walk out of the theater. Da, da, da. Cut, you cut, know. cut, cut, cut. Cut, cut, yeah. cut, exactly. And then once you do do 100 cuts and you start to see, it looks like 80s TV or something like that, which is horrible. Um, so I had the performances where I didn't have to cut. And that's what, you know, usually you're cutting around something. I was never cutting around anything because I always had great performances. Yeah. Uh, Louis, you know, you're coming from uh, A Monster Calls, which came out, I think, last year or the year before, excuse me. Uh, a lot of really heavy, heavy, dramatic moments uh, in that movie for you. Uh, after doing it, were you looking for something where there were, there's some heavy dramatic stuff in this, but I think a little less tragic in, in this? Yeah, uh, I think, you know, that's what's great about, um, I guess, being an actor. You know, you get to do a lot of different a variety of different things. Um, so yeah, well, it was refreshing to do a, a film this fun and and you know just spending time with like four dogs on top of me in the back of a car. You know, it it, it was good fun. It was really, I really really enjoyed it. Yeah, I did. Do the dogs ever get? I love dogs. I really do. But did the dogs ever get annoying when you were trying to act? Were you ever like, can I just get out of here? I just need to do my line. No, <laughs> Not hit them, no, obviously, but just I, push slightly, push. <laughs> Never, not a single moment. I, the kitty cat. There was a kitty cat that was um, volatile. That <laughs> that I that I was 
yeah, that I was wary of, but <laughs> th but no, they're awesome. Uh, Peter, you and uh, Christopher Plummer vape some weed <laughs> in, uh, in, in a scene in this movie. Have the, did the two of you ever do that offset? And do you still smoke as much pot as the people that you play do? Not nearly as much as people think. My pot has gotten stronger and better. <laughs> I cut down on the consumption rate. And now I do edibles. And uh, MedMen's right down the street, you know what I mean? <laughs> on Fifth Avenue. Um, what made you switch over to edibles? Uh, my lungs. Fair. Fair enough. <laughs> there was something that was neat about taking the hit, though, and letting the smoke get out that far, then <laughs> shooting it back in the mouth, a big diaphragm pull. But I, I, I did it across the country with all those groovy moments. We never said what it was here. <laughs> we got Jack with it loaded. Try this. <laughs> it was fun, you know, and it's been fun in my life. Uh, and now it's, I worry about Jeff Sessions mildly because he's so excited to put me in jail. But I don't give a shit. No, excuse it's me. Like to put I a lot that. of people. No, I, I don't think it's, it's almost selfish for you to think it's just you at this point. <laughs> it turns out it's a lot of people who want to. Thank God. You know, and the CBD oil. I, I'm a big proponent of all the stuff, all the hemp stuff you can do. Clothes, paper, our de Declaration of Independence, our Constitution. It's all written on hemp paper. But our government says that's a class one drug. Far out. And we found that we can, you Who can knew? do a lot when it comes to pain relief and, and Absolutely marijuana. Right. And you can yeah. combat the opioid crisis in, in ways that we haven't even really figured out yet, but we're unwilling to really test it right. and try it. Yeah, completely agree. Uh, on that note, let's get some questions about the movie from the audience. <laughs> what do we have here? Who has a question right here? You? Uh, hi, everyone. I'm Dan. It's an hi. honor to be in front of you. I'm a really big fan. And my question for you today is, um, what was the most challenging scene that you guys filmed mm -hmm. in the movie? That's more your question, Vera. Oh. <laughs> I was just a campfire. Um, all right, it's in the it's in the uh, promotional clip there. I think the scene in which my Christopher, my my daddy, Papa Bear, accuses me of not of not laughing mm -hmm. as much as I that I used to laugh more, and um, it's almost harder to laugh on camera <laughs> than it is to cry. Laughter is such an involuntary reaction. I mean, so are tears, but. Um, but there are so many different mannerisms that you can throw at your face to kind of uh, portray crying, whereas laughter is such an innately kind of uh, genuine human emotion. Right. And, and yet then, then you layer on the complexity of the scene that she's also, you know, taking, taking the urine out of him, and, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, with this moment and, and mocking what he's saying. There's like there's multi layers of, of, of well, you, you talk about it because that's a really fun no, that was just one of those scenes. That was a that, soliloquy that she had to deliver. And I was in a camera car behind her, like without being able to really direct Vera. And she that was all you. That was it's actually my favorite performance in the movie. It's my favorite moment in the movie. It's an incredible scene. Mm -hmm. I, I think you do a wonderful job of starting with a kind of fake laugh into a real laugh into something that is really kind of heartbreaking by the end of it as you see her sort of realize all of the things that she's trying to hide and trying to do and then coming to maybe find herself at the end in a, a yeah. bit of sadness. It's a really great scene. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, next question. Hi, we're gonna take our last question from an online viewer. Sophie would like to know, as creatives, how do you choose your roles? Hmm. They choose me. They just waft towards me, and and the, it's they're just usually head turners where I feel like ah the world needs this story, or I need this story, um, and it's it's usually one of those two things. I look at them like little rides that someone invites you to come along, and you take it or you don't. Wow, you just uh, slid that one. You're not going to get involved. No, I mean, come on, Lewis. Leaning uh, back, <laughs> leaning away I mean, from I, direction. I, I, <laughs> I don't know really. I mean, I I'm I think it's a lot about the people involved in it. Like I remember in this film when I got the chance to Skype with with Shauna and I just you know she had such a great I'm sure she was so great in it. You know what I mean? And like that's what really made me want to do it. And so I I think once you meet people and get to know the people who are behind making the film, it's really what makes me want to do it. Simple, getting to smoke pot with Christopher. Here's the, the finest uh, Shakespearean actor in the Americas. 
That's how I like to describe him. And, and on stage or film, he is. Selling pot to Easy Rider. I think that's hysterical. <laughs> Have fun with it. How do you choose the, uh, the projects that you're going to follow through on? Because we all have crazy ideas, and yeah. then how do you choose the one that you're going to devote a year or two? Yeah, to? sometimes longer. And, you know, I'm a mom of three, and um, I love my family. And so finding something that's going to take you away from that for a while is really challenging. So right now, I mean, I, I really want to just make films that I really feel like, I think what Vera said, need to be put out in the world. And I think this film gave me a really lovely opportunity to not only portray my family and make a movie about forgiveness, but also to... Um, shine a light on something that I care deeply, deeply about, which is rescuing animals. Oh, absolutely, yeah. yeah. Um, I love the film. Congratulations. How can people see Boundaries? And then they can see it in the theater, L.A., New York, June 22nd. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Everybody give them a round of applause and Thank go see you. Boundaries. On Thank you very much. Second.